Tennis is, uh, I mean, it is sport at the end of the day, uh, but I think all sport, tennis included, is really a, a microcosm of life. It, uh, you know, it's a reflection of how you deal with things in life and the lessons you learn by playing sport, I think, always uh, transcends in, into life as well. So, um, whether it's tennis or any other sport, I feel, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much just a part of life. As long as I can remember, I've always been a fan of sports and uh, I was fortunate to be born into a tennis family. Uh, my dad and his brothers all played tennis, my cousins played tennis. My, uh, my dad in fact was a Royal College tennis captain and uh, he won public schools. I had two other cousins who were Royal College tennis captain and one also another Davis Cup player. So uh, being surrounded by a whole bunch of tennis players, I think it was just a natural process where I uh, picked up a, a liking for the sport. And uh, as a kid, I would go with my dad um, sometimes after work when he would be playing um, some kind of racket sport, whether it be tennis, uh, badminton or squash. And I would just go hang around and by watching him, I guess I just developed a fondness for sport and then I took a few lessons, my sister and I, and uh, from there it's just been uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, yeah, so I was uh, a pretty competitive junior right throughout. Uh, I remember playing tennis from under eight. I started at seven, and uh, I won a few junior national events as well. I was runner-up in a few, uh, and then uh, won quite a few other ranking tournaments uh, in Sri Lanka, and uh, was ranked number one. Uh, both junior and men's tennis player and uh, I guess as a Sri Lankan the highlight of tennis would be winning nationals and for me 2001 was really the highlight of my career here in Sri Lanka where uh, I won both the singles and doubles. Uh, Davis Cup was still the biggest event for any Sri Lankan and uh, it was always a, a childhood dream of mine to play Davis Cup and when it finally came it was almost uh, unreal and the way it happened as well, the, the way I played my first match was also a crazy experience. So um, I, I don't think a lot has changed since then, especially when it comes to Davis Cup, because Davis Cup is still the biggest event for any Sri Lankan here. Uh, nobody has really gone on you know, to the, the Grand Slam events or the ATP 1000s, 500s. So uh, the Davis Cup is by far the biggest uh, event for Sri Lankans. My first Davis Cup experience was in 99 and uh, I just made it onto the team and uh, we were playing Iran. It was a group two tie and uh, we had lost to Iran 3-0. It was the third day and it was the reverse singles and uh, Jayendra Vijay Sekar, who was a captain at that time, he was supposed to play the reverse singles, the first match on Sunday morning. <laughs> and uh, we went to the courts, he started warming up uh, he warmed up for about 30 to 45 minutes and then he sat down after the match and um, he was just relaxing before the start of play. And then um, it was brought to attention that Iran had made a switch in their lineup and their number one player was not going to play anymore. So uh, Jayanda came up to me and he was like, Renuk, would you like to play? And uh, at first I thought he was joking, I couldn't believe it. Uh, because that was not the plan. We had had a team meeting the night before and it was decided that we had an unchanged lineup. And uh, of course, when he asked me that question and I realized that he was not joking, I said yes, because it was a childhood dream of mine. And even if I had a paddle, I would have said yes. Uh, but funnily, I only had one racket with me at that time because I didn't know I was going to be playing. I had just one racket and one t-shirt, no change of clothes. Um, and then Jayandra went up to the referee's desk and asked them uh, to make a change and the referee said you know the scorecard has already been written and so he can't change the scorecard and uh, 
finally Jayendra changed it. He, he just put Jayendra Vijay Shekhar and within parentheses he put captain and under that he put my name for Sri Lanka and then the Iranian guy's name. And uh, I remember very vividly walking out to the court. Uh, I, I just couldn't believe that I was really playing. And uh, just before I went, I called home. I called my parents to tell them that I was playing. My dad answered the phone. My mom had gone to church because uh, she knew I wasn't really going to be playing. And uh, went on to the court. You know, I think the situation probably got to me. Before I even knew it, I was down 5-1. And uh, I still don't know how I did it, but uh, I ended up winning that match 7-5, 6-1. And uh, it's like a daze. I really don't know how it happened, but um, I was very fortunate. And uh, luckily, my mom just managed to catch the end of that match. She just made it back from church because my dad had left a message. And uh, so it was, a, it was a surreal experience, really, because it came in a way that I never really expected. And uh, by far, that is the, the best memory I have of Davis Cup. Uh, well, I played uh, some futures tournaments uh, and actually won Challenger tournament once in the UK. I never really won a, a futures tournament. Uh, but for me, I guess the highlight was uh, getting an ATP point, um, you know, being ranked on the ATP Korean. I think I was uh, one of the first Sri Lankans after a very long time, perhaps after maybe Arjun Fernando. So that was an achievement. Uh, and then um, I had some pretty decent wins in the international arena, I guess. Uh, the best win probably was against uh, this guy called Jason Jung, who was ranked number two in Southern California at that time. And uh, I think right now he's uh, inside the top 200. He's uh, a touring professional. And um, the, the second win probably would be against a guy called Vasudeva Reddy, who was a former Indian Davis Cup player. And I played him in an Indian national tournament. So those were probably the biggest uh, highlights of, of my playing career like that. But then I also happened to play college tennis in the US. And uh, I was uh, nominated as an uh, academic All-American scholar athlete. So uh, I think that was a big achievement for me as well. I was in the US. I moved to the US in '99. Uh, and then I still continued to play tennis whilst I was there. I played in college. I actually went to the U.S. on a tennis scholarship and then played four years of college tennis. First at a small liberal arts school in Maryland and then at the University of California, Irvine. And uh, I continued to play tennis while I was there. Uh, but then in 2005, I actually got into coaching. I was the assistant men's tennis coach at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. And uh, so that was taking up a lot of my time. And, uh, you know, I had plans to kind of settle down in the U.S. So um, I wanted to play one last time in Sri Lanka in 2007, happened to be in Sri Lanka. And um, I decided that I would give it one more shot and came back in 2007 to play. To be brutally honest and frank, I think uh, Sri Lanka tennis has a long way to go, um, you know, the international arena is very, very competitive and you have some phenomenal athletes who are out there. Um, we, we do have a long way to go, but I think we can get uh, somewhere, particularly in the Asian circuit, I think. Uh, but that will take a lot of planning and a really structured program, I think, uh, a collective program with uh, the, the SLT and maybe also the, the sports ministry joining hands to, um, to achieve those goals. It's hard to say because uh, there are some kids who are very talented, but you know, talent can only take you so, so far. And uh, there are lots of very, very good kids abroad as well. You know, whilst I was coaching in the US, uh, coaching the university team during the summers, we would have, we would run uh, through uh, you know, summer camps and you had about 400 kids show up every summer and, you know, you have, you have very good kids all over the world. And uh, subsequently, after I finished coaching in college, I worked at a full-time academy in Ojai, California. And, um, you know, it's been rated in the top 10 U.S. Uh, tennis academies. And uh, you have players from all over the world, from South America, from the U.S., from Europe, from Africa. 
and uh, it's extremely competitive. So I, I would certainly say we do have the talent when it comes to uh, cognitive skills, hand-eye coordination and all of that. But uh, athletically, I still feel we have a long way more to go. So in terms of strength, endurance, uh, explosiveness, Sri Lankans, unfortunately, genetically, I feel aren't uh, the most privileged in that department. Well, my plan has always been and my... Uh, my advice to any kid is really, you know, to, to become a really good athlete. A, to become a really good person first, you know, and then of course to become a really good athlete. So that means picking up uh, multiple skills, you know, tennis is a, a multi-skill sport. And, uh, you know, just picking up as many skills as you can, playing as many sports as you can when you're really young. And then uh, finally, really finding that niche that you really like, and hopefully it's tennis, and then you continue from there. And uh, I would, without any doubt, without any hesitation, I would recommend all kids go through college tennis and then try to make it to the pros if they can. Uh, you know, the, the pro circuit is really kind of a crapshoot. It's extremely tough. Uh, there are so many risks involved. It's, it's a tough journey. It's a lonely journey out there. You can get injured. Uh, so many things can, you know, go south. So I think uh, the best route really for any really good kid is to, you know, do well in the juniors and then look at going to um, uh, college, you know, in the U.S. probably and playing college tennis. And then from there, the avenues that can open up are limitless. I mean, if you win the NCAAs, I think you get a, a wild card to the U.S. Open. And, uh, you know, the different avenues that can open up by being a really good uh, college tennis player are limitless, whether it be in the tennis world or uh, even in the professional world. So that is my advice. You know, I, I really missed being in the tennis world, like on a full time basis. So I think I've kind of gone the full circle. I've tried a few other ventures as well, where my heart is, where my passion is. You know, this is for the long run.